So before you get started, I want to briefly overview all the components. I'm not going to go to them in detail. Please, please, please be sure to look at the scoring guide as you're learning. It's a very important collateral that we have developed based on questions we receive from clinicians in training. So I think we'll, you'll find it very, very helpful. So let's talk about these 17 physiologic components that you're going to intimately learn to um, identify and score. The first one is lip closure, which is assessing the ability for the lips to seal and contain a bolus in the oral cavity. Component number two is tongue control during bolus hold. This is assessed before the beginning of any tongue movement during the time after which the patient is told to hold the material in the oral cavity. It doesn't matter if the patient can't hold it because they don't have the cognitive ability to hold it or if it's because they have some sort of sensory motor issue. You score what you see. Can they contain the bolus in the oral cavity? Bolus preparation and mastication is the ability to efficiently chew the bolus and prepare it safely for swallowing. Bolus transport lingual motion is an assessment of the speed and efficiency of lingual movement to propel a bolus through the oral cavity. With bolus transport lingual motion, you begin your assessment after there's initiation of oral tongue movement not during the time when the patient is holding the bolus or told to hold the bolus in the oral cavity. It's once they start to move their tongue, that's when you assess the integrity of its movement. Oral residue is any material remaining in the oral cavity after the initial swallow. Now, we realize that residue is not a physiologic component. It's a result of some problem with physiology. But because there has, in, in our work and work of others, residue uh, scores, if you will, have a high relevance to penetration, aspiration, and the nature of your oral intake. They stay in the equation and we assess them. And it's important that for both oral and pharyngeal residue, you make your residue score after the initial swallow. You certainly note any improvements with multiple swallows, cued multiple swallows, all those compensations, for example. But those do not get included in your basic MBSIMP score. Initiation of the pharyngeal swallow um, can be a little bit tricky. You base your decision on the location of the bolus head or leading edge at the time of that first brisk superior anterior hyoid trajectory. So you have to look at the relationship between the location of the bolus head and the first hyoid movement. And what I do is I put my cursor on the hyoid and I move my arrow forward and look at the first frame when the hyoid moves briskly. Soft palate elevation and retraction, you score this at the height of the um, soft palate movement, the point of maximal upward and retracted movement. Not when it's on its way or when it's on its way back, but the point of maximal movement. In fact, any scores that we, or any components that we suggest, you know, you're scoring movement you want to take the point of maximal displacement. Laryngeal elevation. Laryngeal elevation is a very difficult uh, score to derive if all, of your look, all you're looking at is movement of the thyroid cartilage on a modified barium swallow study. It's very difficult to uh, um, discriminate laryngeal movement from hyoid movement because they, they work as a functional um, group, if you will. So what we have done based on the literature, we know that during laryngeal elevation, two things happen. The arytenoid cartilages come forward and the epiglottis descends to a horizontal position. So we use as a surrogate for laryngeal elevation approximation of the arytenoid cartilage, this mound back here, this triangle, 
to the epiglottic base or petiole, this contact. So you can see laryngeal elevation is assessed by complete superior movement of the thyroid cartilage as indicated by complete approximation of the arytenoid to the epiglottic petiole. And this occurs with the upward movement of the larynx and, by the way, shortening of the long muscles of the pharynx, consistent with work by Peter Carillis, Fred McConnell, and Bill Pearson. Anterior hyoid movement or excursion. We only have three options here. What we're looking at is the completeness and uh, anterior movement and alignment of the hyoid with the thyroid cartilage. So in a score of zero, for example, complete, you want this nice angular um, relationship between the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage in around this 40 degree mark. If you get hyoid movement forward, but it's less than in and around this 45 degrees in the region of a one here, for example, that's partial movement. And if there's no anterior movement, as in this line here, direct alignment with the uh, thyroid cartilage, that would be considered no anterior movement. And you'll see examples of this. Epiglottic movement, so we're looking at complete inversion, partial inversion, which is everything from horizontal up to complete uh, inversion to no inversion at all. Laryngeal vestibular closure, what we're looking at here is at the very height of the swallow, and by height of the swallow, I mean maximal anterior hyoid displacement. You're looking at any material in the laryngeal vestibule. Here you can see material in the laryngeal vestibule between the arytenoid cartilage and the epiglottic base. This is actually a score of one that you'll learn. Pharyngeal stripping wave, you're looking at the progressive contraction of the superior, middle, and inferior uh, pharyngeal musculature, the constrictor musculature, um, and there are three potential scores. This is tricky because most speech-language pathologists are not used to looking at it. Once you start looking at it, I think you'll be pretty amazed at the role that the pharynx plays, um, not only in swallow impairment, but in the ability for this mechanism to adapt um, when other pressures and displacement of the um, hyoid and larynx, for example, are impaired. Pharyngeal contraction component number 13 is assessed in the AP view. What you're looking at here is the, the laterality or the symmetry of the um, lateral walls of the pharynx to both lift and compress. You're really looking at a combination here between pharyngeal shortening associated at the time of laryngeal elevation and for, uh, pharyngeal stripping or compression of the bolus um, on both sides. PE segment opening, pharyngoesophageal segment opening, you assess this at the point of maximal opening. And what you're looking at is this fairly symmetric flow of the bolus with no obstruction. And with PE segment opening, you're assessing not only your judgment of the degree of the opening, but also the duration. Because many patients will have really good opening, but because of poor, for example, anterior hyoid mechanics or inability of the pharynx to help lift the larynx, it'll close early and result in a, a, a lot of residue, for example, and potentially aspiration in the pharynx after the swallow. Tongue base retraction. You know, the tongue base moving back is a high pressure in uh, combination with the uh, pharyngeal stripping wave. And also you have the soft palate here maximally displaced up and back. And so this composite pressure is very important. But what we're looking specifically is the ability of the base of tongue to contact the posterior pharyngeal wall. And sometimes it's difficult to see you know, where the, the tongue base stops and where the posterior pharyngeal wall begins. 
But the way that we assess this is we're looking at the space between the base of the tongue and the posterior pharyngeal wall. Here there is none. This is an example of a zero with no contrast between the tongue base and the posterior pharyngeal wall. And you'll get many examples of this. Pharyngeal residue, again, you're used to looking at residue for sure. This is the amount of contrast or barium that remains in the pharynx after the initial swallow. Okay, so if the patient swallows twice, I might say, well, they went from a three, and with that compensatory strategy, now they're a one. So you're already demonstrating your ability to impart a strategy and improve their swallow. However, you want to score baseline impairment, not compensation, in your overall impression scoring that you're going to learn how to do. Esophageal clearance in the upright position always brings a lot of controversy. Um, clinicians tell me radiologists don't want me to turn the patient around because they don't think we should be looking at the esophagus. It's an incomplete exam. There are liability issues if I miss something. What you have to stress is that you are looking AP for two reasons. Not only, for example, esophageal clearance, but also for component number 13, um, which is pharyngeal contraction, for one thing. Secondly, the only thing you're assessing as a speech-language pathologist is clearance of contrast through the esophagus in the upright position because, one, that's the position that most of our patients eat and drink in or semi-upright. And two, there are studies that are located in your guide that show the relationships between incomplete esophageal clearance that manifest as an oral pharyngeal impairment.